So my very special guest today on the red couch, wearing red, <laughs> is the lovely Dr. Kim Jibod Singh, who is a fascinating person, um, not only because of her immense qualifications and body of work and her varied career, but her, perhaps your philanthropic work, your work at community level, your passion to give back to your society and the many things that you are involved in. And uh, I welcome you to the Red Couch here at, at Capital Media. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so I've, I've seen your name up in lights, so to speak, in recent times with the Anson McCall, uh, with the Anthony Sabga Award. But I want to go back a little bit more and talk about, you know, the name Jabod Singh. Well, your dad is associated for many years with the University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you are Barbadian born. Were you born in Barbados? I'm, I'm born in Barbados. My mom is Barbadian. My dad's Trinidad. Mm -hmm. um, and my family is Barbadian. My mom's Trinidad. And my dad's Well, based on what you just said, my parents are all in service. So my mom was a teacher at Combo Mare. Many, many of those watching here, she would have taught. Yeah. And um, my dad was a youth collector at me and K-12. And he was very, very involved in sports. Tell us about your education. You went to Harrison College, I believe. Yeah, well, I went to Erdiston Primary School. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to Government Elementary School. That's still exists. Oh. Um, and then I went to Harrison College. Followed by, I did my bachelor's degree at University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. And I did my residency in ophthalmology at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. And then I did my fellowship in ophthalmic surgery at University of Toronto. Your skills, I would imagine, are highly specialized. I mean, are there many like you in, in the Caribbean? So, uh, my specialty as an ophthalmic surgeon is basically surgery around the eye. So it's not intraocular surgery, so it's not surgery within the eye. For example, that would be like cataract surgery or retina surgery. My surgery involves the eyelid, the bones around the eye, the tear ducts around the eye, the eyelashes. So if I got into a serious accident and, and I had damage around my eyes and so on, that's where That's where that's I where would you, come into play, especially if you you know, injured your eyelids and needed that kind of, of reconstruction. And the, the thing is, is that actually from all around the Caribbean, patients are sent here for this, for these kind of surgeries. Why is that? Is because... It's not available in, in their country. So, so the fact that people come here suggests that, it's, as you said, it's a highly specialized, but not only is it highly specialized, but there are not obviously many people who do what you do um, in our region. No, definitely not. I mean, the, the smaller islands for sure don't have aquaplastic surgeons. How do you balance your very specialized um, life of ophthalmology and your specialty and your teaching and your involvement with um, squash um, with family life? How, 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 do, how, do you, how do you find that? That well, I mean, it, oh, at the end of it all, my family comes first. I mean, that's really the family comes first. But, you know, we are very close, our family. Um, we have a lot of interests together, so we often do things together. Now my boys are becoming teenagers, they do some more stuff on their own. On their own, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, um, and, you know, my boys, as I said, I get involved in a lot of things that they do. So they, they, I went to Harrison College, they go to Harrison College. So I try to get involved in the school and then I um, involved, very involved in squash. They actually, so they love to cook, my sons. Cook? Yes. And they, and I actually think you know about this, but they started a lemonade business. Oh, those are your boys. Those are my boys. And then over COVID, actually we were so lucky because they loved to cook the food we were getting in COVID when in lockdown. It's this gourmet, amazing food. From two boys. From today, they love. I mean, uh, they don't have a patience for a lot of other things, but they have patience for cooking. For cooking. During COVID, they actually um, cooked and cooked so much, and they designed a menu, and they actually opened a cafe. So they have their own cafe. 
is there is there any public um, mechanism either through the health service or the hospital where your services are made available or can be made available to to people who are financially unable to uh, to meet those costs right so when i came back to barbados i was actually um, offered a position as a, a session or part-time consultant at the hospital mm -hmm. so i worked there uh, in sessions and i am able to do some surgery there um, so if for example, even if a patient comes to see me in my office and they say to me, look, I can't afford to come here to see you because I can afford to come and just get a visit with you and it takes so long to be seen at the hospital, I will refer them to the hospital. So then that patient can see me in the hospital clinic and I can do the surgery for them at the hospital. And there's, there's You're very there. unique, I would imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> not too many people would do that. So let's bring it home, Kim, to the and the Anthony Sabga Award. Tell us how how did that come about, and exactly what are you expected to do with the the award that that you're granted? Two things I know it will involve is one is research. I definitely want to expand on research development in ophthalmology in Barbados and the Caribbean. And the second thing that I want to do is I want to develop the youth in squash more. I want to be involved in, in youth development in sports. As I said, I think it's really important for our country to recognize that different kids have different skills and that that's what, you know, a way to go to get these kids still involved. You clearly have mastered the art of, of of family life, professional life, sports life, and even recreational life and an and, and artistic and creative life. So Kim uh, Jibod Singh, Dr. Kim Jibod Singh, I want to thank you for what has been a fascinating interview. I'm not sure how we're going to edit this interview uh, because you've given us so much information. Um, but thank you. And, and, and I certainly hope that you continue to um, make your services available and to have that big heart for community because so often people look inward rather than outward and you clearly are one of those who look outward. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. <laughs>